Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today I'm going to be doing a truth or treat spin on a Q&A where if I don't want to answer a question, I have to eat a dog treat. This video is in celebration of this channel hitting 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed and if you've not already, I would love for you to join us here. I'm so glad that you guys are finding my videos informative and entertaining and a lot of your comments make me super super excited that you're taking what you've learned in these videos and then applying it to your pets. I love hearing that, that's the whole reason why I make these. If you are not following me on Instagram, I highly recommend. I have two different Instagram accounts. I have tattooed.dogtrainer. That one's gonna be more of my personal stuff as well as more like YouTube based things. And then I have my business account, that one is Top Dog Behavior. That one's gonna be definitely more like training and nutrition, infographic, information focused. Um, I definitely recommend checking out both if you would like, but a lot of like the channel updates and channel information and stuff will be on my personal account. So I'll leave those linked down below as well. So on top of submitting questions, I did have you guys vote on what kind of twist you wanted to see in regards to this Q&A. Your options were a hundred plus pet tour, uh, my dogs testing and ranking different people food, the treat taste test that I have to do, and then just a regular Q&A. You guys obviously know which one won. However, all of the questions you guys sent in were really, really great questions that I definitely want to answer. So instead of taking the easy route and saying that I don't have to do this anymore because I'm going to answer all the questions, I decided to break the questions up into three different categories and at the end of each category I will be eating a treat. Um, starting with the Bosque's Bakery peanut butter and banana cookies, we're going to take a shot of goat's milk and then we're going to finish it off with a hearty fish skin from the Honest Kitchen. I would also like to apologize if you see this big empty box back here. It's not empty, that's our Aranda tank. The light died like yesterday and I haven't had a chance to fix it because I have to order it online. So at some point I do definitely want to do a pet tour. I've had a lot of requests to do that because I do have a lot of weird interesting pets outside of just my weird interesting dogs. Um, but that's a giant fish tank. It is dark. I am very sorry that you can't see them because they're really pretty. So now that I've rambled on for about three minutes, I'm going to go ahead and get right into the questions. So very first category I want to touch on is all about my pets. The second category is going to be all about me personally and the third category is going to be all about my job and my career and all of that jazz. So first off, what kind of dogs do I have? I have three dogs actually. I have a lab Weimaraner mix named Luna. I have a Husky Shepherd mix named Misty and then I have a Lhasa Apso Poodle mix named Tiki. Typically you will only see Luna and Misty on my channel just because they live with me in my apartment. Uh, Tiki is my first ever dog. I got him when I was six years old. Tiki lives over at my parents' house. He currently has a lovely doting servant of my sister taking care of him and I do see him quite a few times throughout the week. I'm sure I'll, you'll see a picture on Instagram at some point of him. But Luna and Misty are the two that you will see in my videos most often. So next question, where did my dogs get their names? Uh, side question, why are your dogs names so basic? And I can only take credit or blame for naming one of them. Luna is named after Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. I never even really made the association that Luna is such a common dog name until afterwards. But I am a huge Harry Potter fan. More specifically, I am a huge Luna Lovegood fan. She's my absolute favorite. She's so quirky and I love her. And that's where the Luna Lovegood part came from. And then everyone's dog is named Luna. Um, so that one's, that's on me. Misty is my boyfriend's dog and she was named after Misty from Pokemon. We definitely have a little bit of a nerdy household so those seem to fit pretty well even though on their own they are relatively uh, unoriginal names but that's totally cool, that's totally fine. There's a reason why those names are so popular. Tiki on the other hand, like I said before, I got him when I was six. Um, growing up we went to Disneyland like every single year 
and the tiki room was our absolute favorite we also have family in hawaii so it's like the tiki room was it and still is one of my favorite places to go in the parks so he was named after the enchanted tiki room next question is adopt or shop and this is a topic that i would like to make an entire video just dedicated towards because i have a lot of feelings and contingencies about everything around this statement the way that i see the statement adopt don't shop is puppy mills not necessarily breeders a lot of people like to lump good reputable breeders in with the shop category and then creates this weird like pitting each other against each other dynamic i'm not i'm not into that by any means i'm 1000 percent adopt a dog versus buying it from a puppy mill source absolutely luckily for me and where i live and i believe the entirety of the west coast you cannot sell dogs and cats in pet stores you can adopt them out but you cannot sell them and that's kind of where the whole puppy milk thing comes from and that's where i personally believe the adopt don't shop thing comes from is not giving puppy mills your money because then they're going to want to keep being a puppy mill but i'm also a huge huge fan of good reputable breeders that do all of the necessary genetic testing before breeding their dogs and do it for the love of the breed and not the love of the wallet so that is my short abridged version of my opinion of adopt don't shop i definitely would like to go deeper into this in a future video so if you're interested in that let me know what other pets do I have? Again, I'd love to do a whole pet tour video and talk more deeply about all of my pets. Um, but off the top of my head, I have the two dogs. I have a leopard gecko. We have an Asian emperor scorpion. I have two cockatiels that I'm sure you've heard in a lot of my videos. We have two stink pot musk turtles. We have aquatic frogs. If you followed me on Instagram before my channel got pretty big, um, you might have seen the frog updates where they started laying eggs and breeding. We have an eel, we have a bunch of different fish tanks, and that pretty much sums it up. But I do have a ton of space in this apartment dedicated to animals. Husky and Lab, yikes, how do you keep up with their energy? So thankfully, Luna and Misty are both about the same age. Misty is going to be two in May and Luna just turned two in December and they keep each other company while we work. We do our best to get them out on walks every day and when we do walks they're typically two to four miles. Um, we try to take them to the nearby park as often as we possibly can and let them run and play fetch there. They terrorize our house a little bit. They'll chase each other around and they usually keep each other pretty active that way. Watching their behavior and watching their waistlines they seem to be doing totally fine with the routine that we have set up and definitely as we get more into the spring and summer months especially fall i love hiking in fall uh we get to do a lot more water sports with our dogs we get to do a lot more hikes so that's kind of our routine definitely with these dogs especially huskies they can get into trouble if they want to so keeping them from getting bored is very very important and so that mental stimulation and that enrichment is just as important as the physical so keep that in mind and then tell us about your senior dog tiki is my senior dog he is 15 and he's starting to develop some arthritis for sure and some doggy dementia seeing your dog age is kind of a weird experience um he's invincible and like immortal so we don't have to worry about that at all because like he is definitely immortal um but i've been lucky enough that he's been aging pretty gracefully and there haven't been any health concerns that have popped up or caused a lot of concern or discomfort for him but i would like to do a whole video again dedicated to senior pets and things you can do to make the end of their lives um the last like five years of their lives much more comfortable and kind of help prevent different things that do pop up as dogs get older but tiki is great and i love him and he's a little grumpy psychopath and i he's he's my dog he's great 
that is my last question in this category. So I guess that means we're uh, opening these guys. Can I just say going into the pet store and shopping for myself, like looking down the aisles, hmm, what do I want to eat? Super weird. <laughs> now my dogs are over here. Okay. We can all have a cookie. Come here. Sit. Lene, drop the Kong. Good girl. Sit. Good talks. I'm gonna give myself a half. Those are definitely dry. Dry and not super full of flavor. That shot of goat smoke isn't looking too bad right now. Yeah, no, not bad, but very dry. I wouldn't recommend giving it to your kids. Getting into the questions about me. Very first one, how old are you? I always have a lot of people surprised how young I am. Um, not to brag or anything, but a lot of people do think that I am quite a few years older than I am. I am actually 21, I won't be 22 until October, and I don't really have much more to say about that. So what hobbies do you have outside of dog stuff? Right now, since we're in a pandemic, I don't really get to do much else besides dog stuff. I guess that's not really pandemic related, it's more related to the fact that I'm doing YouTube that's dog related. I'm doing nutrition that's dog related. I'm doing dog training that's dog related. My entire house is dog related. But I really enjoy movies. I love artwork. I don't do art myself. I'm not that great at it. But I do love collecting artwork. Back before the pandemic and back when I was in high school, I did hula a lot. Um, I was a hula dancer and I would love to get back into that once the pandemic kind of settles down and once I have more time in my schedule. I also used to do a lot of horseback riding and a lot of competitions in horse riding. And I actually was a musician. I am a musician. I have not picked up an instrument in a while. I, I don't know if I am. Maybe I was. I would love to get back into it though. But I played flute for nine years and saxophone for seven, I think. That sounds about right. No, I was a definite band kid and like all of these things I would love to pick back up and continue doing, um, but I've definitely kind of thrown myself into work over the last couple of years. <sighs> who is your prettiest sister? Who can guess who might have sent in this question? So I am the oldest of four, it's me, my brother, and then my sisters are twins. And I already told them in the car when they asked me if I was gonna be answering this question when I picked them up yesterday, that I'd be answering myself, even though I know that's not necessarily true. They know that's not necessarily true, but uh, we're, I would say we're a good looking group of gals. So we're gonna leave it at that. Where does the tattooed part of your name come from? Referring to the tattooed dog trainer. So obviously you typically only see me from about the waist up and not all of my shirts show off these two tattoos on my arms. I am working towards full sleeves on my arms, but I also have nine other tattoos. I'm mostly tattooed on my lower half on my legs, and I do have plans to get between two and five more tattoos in the next two-ish months, so I'm very excited about that. If you would ever like to see any tattoo related content, maybe a tattoo tour, let me know as well because this channel actually started because I wanted to talk about tattoos and piercings and hair coloring and all that stuff, um, but then obviously has morphed into dogs. But if you have any tattoo questions, I can answer those too. Uh, another tattoo question, what does tattoo collector mean? In all of my bios and stuff you'll see tattoo collector, dog trainer, and pet nutritionist. And that is because I do consider myself tattoo collector. Tattoos are probably like right up there with dogs. I'm always talking about dogs and I'm always talking about tattoos. And I collect tattoos, spend a lot of time looking at tattoos, I go to specific artists 
when we travel it's a whole thing I have to like research ahead of time um, but I do consider myself a tattoo collector I do it because I like collecting the artwork and not necessarily because everything's super meaningful to me I'm I'd enjoy tattoos and I enjoy dogs when did you start your YouTube channel I actually started my channel back in October of 2016 and I would post mostly about um, my mental health journey and tattoos and piercings and dyeing my hair crazy colors and I mostly used it as a creative outlet to kind of get myself through high school um, because of a lot of mental health problems but I ended up taking a break doing some dog content that kind of got some traction and then took another break came back more dog content and then that's where we are now basically I treat this as a way of me ranting extensively about things that I think no one actually cares about and then people surprise me by caring about it so thank you that brings us to the end of the uh, mini portion so uh, today we are drinking answers raw goat milk if you haven't checked out my goat milk video, I will leave it linked up here as well as down below. Highly recommend you check it out. Technically, there's nothing wrong with me drinking this. People drink raw goat's milk all the time, but I am not a milk gal. I don't want to say that I'm lactose intolerant, but I think I might be lactose intolerant, which doesn't really matter because this is goat milk. Um, and the lactose molecules are much smaller and easier to digest. But I'm not, I'm, I just, I don't like milk. I'm not a milk drinker. I'm a juice gal. So, cheers. So don't let my reaction turn you off because the taste overall is fine, it just was not what I was expecting because I forgot that Answers puts honey and cinnamon in their milk to like flavor it a little bit. Um, I forgot about that part. That was a shock to my system. I, I'm not a milk gal, but my dogs are milk gals, so we're going to leave it at that. So, very first question here, what horse training did you do? So I don't know if anyone reads my description, but I do mention that my training education started with horses. But I did horseback riding from probably ages 5 to 18. Um, like I said, after high school I kind of went full force into career mode and didn't have time for much else. So another thing I'd like to get back into at some point. When I started I did bareback and then I transitioned into western and was actually doing some training for trail competitions um, and then did that briefly before landing in English where I did hunter jumper and I competed in hunter jumper which is a tough sport when you don't have money. Um, it's just a very political if you know someone who knows someone, you tend to do better in my personal experience. And it definitely, I learned a lot. I enjoyed it while I did it. So towards the end of my competition career and then after I was doing competitions, I mostly did a lot of training. I could not afford a horse of my own. I rode a school horse and I also helped my trainer train a lot of these other school horses basically she got a bunch of horses for cheap from mostly college girls that would go away to college and couldn't keep their horse or they moved on with their lives and couldn't keep their horse um, so all of the horses were like very old usually not child safe um, and it was a big part of my job in riding them to get them not only child safe but to get them to a point where a child could compete with them um, to the best of their abilities. So that was really cool. I learned a lot through my time as a avid equestrian and I really do miss it. How did you know that you wanted to be a dog trainer? So I actually did not. 
um, from ages like 2 to 16, I was dead set on being a veterinarian. And I saw that as my only option. I had been researching vet school options since probably middle school. And basically, as I got older, I came to the realization that I didn't have an interest in the medical aspect. I liked the psychology and behavioral aspect of veterinary work. Um, and you don't want a vet that's not interested in the medical part because that's their job part. Um, there are veterinary behaviorists and that was something that like kind of interests me. Um, but then as I continued getting older and older, I kind of started to realize vet school is not going to be for me. Um, in fact, I completely decided that traditional college was not the way to go about doing things for me. So I went from thinking that I wanted to be a veterinarian to knowing that I wanted to do more behavioral and psychological related canine stuff. Um, to then deciding that I was going to be a dog trainer. And then the pet nutrition stuff kind of happened by accident. Where did you get your nutritional training? So to make a super long story shorter, I went through Animal Behavior College. Um, I have videos about my experience with that that I'll, I'll leave a playlist linked somewhere. But I had years and years and years of working with animals, working with pet owners, working with uh, dogs, training other people, training pets from ages. I started volunteering at the Humane Society at 12 and I'd been working with animals and training animals ever since. So I wanted to take the certification course for dog training to be certified. One major thing that was really lacking in that particular course was the nutrition aspect. They did touch on it but it was like literally three pages of like one page was the history of dog food briefly and then the next two or three pages were the pros and cons of dry, wet, and raw food. And so I knew how much a pet's health can contribute to their behavior, so I wanted to get more information on that. I ended up working in an independent pet store that was very dedicated to nutrition and, and educating people about pet nutrition. And so that's where I learned most of the stuff that I know is in working with them. The owner was a certified pet nutritionist as well. Um, and that's where I learned the bulk of my knowledge that I have now. I then went on and I took um, the pet nutritionist certification course through an independent program. Um, this one was through Dogs Naturally University. It was put together by Dr. Margaret Smart and she is a well-respected holistic veterinarian up in Canada. I want to say she was the first to offer a pet nutrition elective course in a veterinary college, at least in Canada, which very well could be the entire North America, but you know. Um, and then it was also put on by Dana Scott, who is the editor and founder of Dogs Naturally magazine. But that is where my certification comes from. I am not a veterinary nutritionist. I did not go to vet school. Basically what that means is I cannot diagnose and I cannot like prescribe medication to treat things, but I can certainly give you some food advice and give you some options um, as two ways of naturally doing different things. I know that was a little vague, but I hope that was helpful. Um, do you do dog training slash nutrition full time? Technically, yes. So right now I work part time at a pet store, a different pet store than I initially mentioned, but still an independent pet store. Um, just to kind of get me through this pandemic because I haven't been able to do any group training classes. I do work 12 hour days most days and I don't give myself days off. So even like the days that I have off from that job, I'm doing training or I'm doing nutritional consults or I'm filming videos. It's really all work all the time, um, which is not what I recommend for your sanity, but here we are. But basically, yes, 24 seven, I'm thinking dog. What does positive reinforcement and force free mean in training? So this is something that again, I have in my description, um, my little bio of myself. And I use positive reinforcement and force free methods when I do my dog training. 
I can go into a whole separate video about the different types of dog training philosophies or um, the four quadrants of operant conditioning and kind of explain that and then explain my reasoning and I think I will be doing that pretty soon. But basically, I believe that the most important part of dog training is the trust between you and your dog and anything that will break that trust, I avoid at all costs. I care more about the long-term effects of our training sessions on your dog's psyche and their interactions with you than I do about your dog learning how to sit within 30 seconds. And I think that that's really important and that is unfortunately considered a new idea. It's also um, highly criticized by some other members of the training community. And again, whole video that I could get into, um, but that's my philosophy is I care, I'm sorry, I care more about your dog than the actual training itself. For some people that's a negative and they don't want to work with me because of that. For most people, I get sought out because I care more about your dog's well-being than anything else. What advice do you have for new dog trainers? So this isn't just for new dog trainers, this is for anybody in the pet industry and any pet owner and that's never think that you've learned it all. Always keep learning. If you think that you know everything, you are beyond wrong and there's always new stuff to learn, especially in the pet industry where in the grand scheme of things we don't know anything. <laughs> We're constantly learning new things about the health of our pets, about the psychological and emotional workings of our pets, and to think that what you learned 30 years ago is still accurate is grossly incorrect. So even just watching videos like these where maybe you're given a new piece of information that you didn't know before, or getting some insight on something that maybe you saw a different way, just educating yourself that way is going to do wonders for getting new information and new perspectives and learning a little bit more, which makes everything better. Well, my battery's flashing and I don't want this to cut off before I eat this final treat for you guys. I do have a tiny piece, teeny tiny piece of the fish skin. So without further ado, thank you guys for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for a thousand subscribers. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you have any questions comment them down below be sure to subscribe if you haven't already uh, check out my Instagrams I'm pretty active on there and if you tag me in your pictures of your cute pets you might see them at the end screen of my videos so watch out for that I will see you in my next video bye that is very fishy god how do you like these See ya.